Have you ever driven across an old metal bridge and wondered why there always seems to be someone out there painting it? It's not just about keeping the structure looking pretty. There's a much deeper, more crucial reason behind this constant maintenance ritual. And it has everything to do with preserving the life of the bridge itself. In today's video, we're diving into the fascinating world of infrastructure upkeep to explore why old metal bridges need constant painting. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start by talking about the fundamental enemy of all metal structures, corrosion. When metal is exposed to the elements, especially oxygen and moisture, it undergoes a chemical reaction that causes it to deteriorate over time. This process is called oxidation, and when it happens to iron or steel, the result is rust. Rust doesn't just make things look bad, it weakens the structural integrity of the metal. And when you're dealing with a bridge that has to hold the weight of hundreds or even thousands of vehicles every day, weakening is something you definitely want to avoid. Most old bridges were built using steel or iron, materials that are incredibly strong, but unfortunately very prone to corrosion if left unprotected. That's where paint comes in. The purpose of painting a bridge isn't just cosmetic, it's a protective barrier. Paint acts as a shield between the metal and the surrounding environment. It keeps moisture, salt, pollutants, and other corrosive agents from making direct contact with the surface of the bridge. Without that protective layer, rust would begin to form rapidly, especially in environments where humidity, rainfall, or coastal salt air are factors. But painting a bridge isn't a one-and-done job. It's a constant cycle. Over time, even the best paint starts to wear down. Sunlight causes the paint to fade and crack. Wind and rain gradually erode it. In winter, the road salt used to melt ice can get kicked up onto the metal parts of the bridge, accelerating corrosion. As soon as the paint layer begins to thin or chip away, the metal beneath becomes vulnerable. That's why maintenance teams are constantly inspecting and repainting sections of these old bridges. It's not just a matter of routine. It's a necessity to ensure safety and prolong the life of the structure. You might be wondering, why not just use a better material that doesn't rust? Well, modern bridge construction has come a long way. Today, engineers often use weathering steel which develops a protective layer of rust that actually prevents further corrosion. Other structures may be made with concrete or coated in more advanced materials. But for the thousands of older bridges that were built long before these technologies existed, regular painting is still the most practical and cost-effective solution. The process of painting a bridge is no small task. First, the old peeling or cracked paint has to be removed, often using a method called abrasive blasting, essentially shooting sand or other materials at high speed to strip off the damaged layer. This also removes any rust that may have formed underneath. But this step generates a lot of dust and debris, so crews must set up containment systems to prevent harmful particles from entering the environment especially if the old paint contains lead, which was commonly used in the past. Once the surface is properly cleaned and prepped, multiple coats of paint are applied. The first is usually a primer that bonds directly with the metal and helps the next layers adhere better. Then comes the intermediate coat, which adds bulk and durability, followed by a final top coat that provides the finished look and the outermost layer of protection. Depending on the size of the bridge, this process can take months or even years to complete, and by the time crews finish one end, they may already need to start again at the other. This ongoing cycle is also why you'll often see scaffolding, 
platforms, or specialized bridge inspection vehicles parked on or around these structures. It's all part of a continuous maintenance plan that keeps the bridge safe, functional, and looking respectable. And it's not just about aesthetics. It's about safety, engineering, and preserving valuable infrastructure that might be decades or even over a century old. The costs involved are enormous. Painting a large metal bridge can run into the millions of dollars, and that's just for one cycle of maintenance. But the cost of letting a bridge deteriorate would be far greater. Corrosion that's left unchecked can lead to serious structural damage, making the bridge unsafe to use. In worst case scenarios, entire sections of a bridge could fail, leading to catastrophic accidents. That's why regular painting, as mundane as it may seem, is actually one of the most important parts of keeping these vital transportation links operational. Let's not forget, too, that many of these old bridges are historical landmarks. They tell the story of a city or a region's development and engineering achievements. Preserving them through maintenance and painting helps retain that history while still serving a practical purpose. Cities like San Francisco, New York, and Pittsburgh all boast iconic painted bridges that are not only functional, but also beloved parts of their skyline. Painting old metal bridges is about far more than just appearances. It's a constant battle against the forces of nature. With every brush stroke or spray, workers are adding years to the life of these aging giants, protecting them from rust, wear, and collapse. It's a difficult, expensive, and never-ending task, but one that's absolutely critical. So the next time you're stuck in traffic on an old bridge and spot workers up high in safety gear, painting away at the beams and trusses, you'll know exactly why they're there. They're not just keeping the bridge looking nice, they're keeping it standing. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.